Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. I'm glad that all of you are here. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online today as well. Good job remembering eight o'clock today. So that's awesome. Uh, obviously today is the day we start our new routine, our new schedule together. So uh, we have worship at eight o'clock in the sanctuary, ten o'clock in the parking lot, unless the weather is not cooperating, in which case ten o'clock we move into the sanctuary. We have Sunday school from 9.15 to 9.45. We're hoping to do as much as we can for that outside as well. If the weather's not cooperating, we'll move into the fellowship hall. A reminder that masks are still required indoors, so thank you for um, following that rule. It's numbers are still high and community transmission is in the red, it's high. So we continue to do what we can to look after one another and care for each other. So you all have a bulletin, and if you're worshiping online, the bulletin is linked to the worship video. Um, and you'll notice that there's a schedule on the front, so you can see what's going on. The schedule is also included in the weekly update email, so you can get that information there too. And then you'll see an announcement insert. This is new and exciting, because you can put this in your purse or your pocket or whatever, and so instead of taking the whole bulletin with you and keeping track of that, you can hopefully just take this with you pretty easily. All of this information is going to be in the weekly email too, so it's just another way to get this information out to you. There is some information on the front page, obviously. You open it up and you see the things that are going on. Like, for example, um, the social outreach mission news is about Lutheran World Relief School Kits, and there's a bin outside for school supplies. Um, or if there's somebody in the office, we can, we can take them for you too. So that's something that you can um, choose to participate in if you would like to. And then there's this side, do you see this little edge part sticking out? It's perforated. You can tear it off, and it's exciting, and it'll make some noise, and people love it. Um, it's a bit of an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. But if you would like, if, you don't have to do this, obviously. But it's a good way for us to keep track of each other and if people are interested in things. So you can fill that out if you want to. And like in the box on the bottom, there's things like if you want to be involved in Sunday school or if you want some more information about anything, this is a good place for you to put it. And then um, on the back is the prayer requests and then also the thing for confirmation students. So if you fill that out at all, you can just tear that off and then put it in the offering plate. And then we'll make sure we have all that information. We're going to try it and see how it goes. I think it'll be a good communication tool for all of us. There are pencils on the usher's table in the back if you want to fill that out. You can grab a pencil from there and then just leave the used pencil on the table so that other folks don't um, pick it up so we can limit touch points. Or if you have a pen or whatever with you, you can, you can do that. Um, if you have questions, let me know. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I think that's all the announcements I have for you. Everybody should have um, their baby with their communion cups, and if you're worshiping online, you can grab bread or crackers or grape juice or wine. And that's it. So, we are singing the Gospel Acclamation today, and we are singing Ascending Him today. So, we are a small enough group in here together that, as long as we're not operatic about our, our voices and such, um, with our masks on, it's, it's okay right now. So we're going to be doing that. Outside, we'll be doing the same thing. Um, the difference between outside and inside is basically outside, we just distance, we don't wear masks. Because of the two out of three, remember? Outdoors, distance, masks. So our two out of there for inside is a distance the best we can and masks. So there we go. That's exciting too. That's really all I have for you today. Um, just kidding. The bulletin is, the italics are the parts that I say, and the bold are the parts that you say. Um, we took out the P and the C for a little bit to see how that goes, because that's like the church language that nobody knows what it means unless you know the church language. And, um, so I'll explain that to folks as we get used to that, and let us know how, how what you think of that as well. Okay, for real. We're going to give thanks for the gift of baptism. This is some responsive stuff too, so I invite you to join in if you would like to. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. 
A reading from 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. You led your people through the sea and called them to life and covenant with you. Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan to begin his mission among us. You pour out your Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. We renew us in your promise so that we may serve this world in all its need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, through suffering and protection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from evil. Take up your cross and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading of Psalm 116, verses 1 through 9. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel acclamation. to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. 
He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? That is the question that our gospel reading starts off with today. Jesus asks the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they respond with simple and complicated responses. They say, John the Baptist. Some people say, some people think that he's Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And then Jesus asks them, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers, you are the Messiah. So who is Jesus? It's a question we get to think about today. And I wonder how you would answer that question, who is Jesus? Maybe you have an answer that comes to mind quickly, like Peter, who gets it right away. Maybe you have to think about it for a bit before you can answer. Maybe you would even think about it for days and still not come up with an answer that satisfies you. Maybe to answer that question, who is Jesus, maybe you would say that Jesus is the one who forgives you, no matter what. Maybe you would say that Jesus is someone you turn to for hope and comfort, someone you worship when you come to church. Maybe you would say that Jesus is your teacher or your friend. Maybe you would say that Jesus is the Messiah. That's how Peter answers the question. When Jesus asks Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter tells us, he tells it straight up, right away. He says that Jesus is the Messiah, our Savior, the Redeemer, the one who delivers us from sin and liberates us from death. Peter gets it. Now, he could have said something like, you're a great storyteller, you're good at performing miracles. He could have said, I don't really know who you are, I'm still trying to figure it out. But Peter knows. Peter knows. He knows that Jesus is the one who came to make things right. To show the world that we are saved and redeemed, that we are delivered from sin and liberated from death. Now, we know that, right? That's not news to most of us. We know the whole story of Jesus' life and death and resurrection. And when we aren't quite sure, or if we're doubting or asking questions, if we don't think we know who Jesus is, we can look to the Apostles' Creed, right? The church gives us an answer, a go-to answer. We confess our faith every weekend when we recite the Apostles' Creed together. That second article that says, I believe in Jesus, that tells us right there. So, we know the story. We know that Jesus died and rose from the dead so that we may have new life. So Peter's response that Jesus is the Messiah, I don't think it's that surprising to any of us to hear. But as followers of Jesus, as people who live in the love of God and share that love with others, we can think of the question this way. Who do you see that Jesus is with your whole life? Who do you say that Jesus is with your whole life? Like, what do you say, or who do you say that Jesus is with your relationships with others? Who do you say that Jesus is with the way you use your finances? Who do you say that Jesus is with the way you spend your time or your energy? Who do you really say that Jesus is? Because you see, in everything, that we do, everything that we say, we have the opportunity to live our lives as an answer to the question, who is Jesus? 
Every day of our lives, we get to experience love and forgiveness, and everything we do and say is a reflection of what that love and forgiveness means to us. Each one of us is a representative, representative of Jesus Christ in everything we do. So when you worship, or when you're serving your neighbors, or taking kids to Sunday school, dropping kids off at confirmation, taking care of our church building, serving on a church team, donating to the church or the food pantry, all those things, when you do those things, you are showing others who Jesus is. And there are so many great things that this congregation is doing. We live out that belief that Jesus is the Messiah in powerful ways. And a lot of us do this in our daily lives. We live into our identity as baptized children of God when we show others who Jesus is by living out our faith. Our faith in Jesus, who is God's Son, the Messiah, our Savior. We live knowing that Jesus is the definition of unending and unconditional love. And in our words and our actions, we live out the answer to the question, who is Jesus? So that others may know that unending and unconditional love for themselves. As we begin this new academic year and as we enter into this new routine of worship and study and serving, I just want to take a moment to thank all of you for doing the wonderful ministry that you do here as the worshiping community of St. Peter Lutheran Church. By being here, it matters. Because you, dear people, you show me the love and the grace of God in understanding in the way that you treat each other, in the way you serve others. And together, we get to live out our mission, our St. Peter mission, to glorify God by building healthy relationships with God, with each other, and with our community following the example of Jesus Christ. And in doing that, each and every one of us is an answer to the question, who is Jesus? So I hope and I pray that as we grow and learn and serve together, we can continue to answer that question, who is Jesus? And I hope and I pray that each one of us continues to live our lives as an answer to that question. Amen. Amen. Now with the whole church, we confess our faith in Jesus together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of life, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Comfort all who lost loved ones 20 years ago on September 11th, and help us remember that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forming God, you gather this community together. 
shape our communal life, that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the desire to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to peel off that top layer of the cup that goes to the wafer. You may eat that wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. If you do not commune, or if you are with somebody who does not commune, you can make the sign of the cross on their forehead or on their hand and say the words, You are a loved child of God. I invite you to peel off that next layer that goes to the grape juice. You may drink that. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with the spread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now set us forth in the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face will shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Would you like to stand for this next song? I invite you to stand for this next song. <laughs> Thank you. 
people share the good news. Thanks be to God.